Right, so this is the pause here on Joy News with me, Elton Brobe. And this Friday, we've got a very compelling conversation with the majority leader of Ghana's parliament. Let me, let me lay the foundation here. The majority caucus in parliament this week accused the minority caucus of attempting to sabotage Ghana's economic growth through their persistent opposition to some tax waivers currently under consideration by the House. There are almost $400 million worth of tax waivers requests that have been pending at the Finance Committee for over three years, some going into four years, entangled in a political stalemate. However, the NDC, they vowed to block these requests at every turn. Now, speaking to journalists in Parliament uh, yesterday, the majority leader, Alexander Fenyamarkin, said the NDC were being hypocritical. He asserted that the NDC government, led by the former president, John Mahama, had granted uh, MPs or put before Parliament more than $800 million in tax waivers during his tenure. But is this the right way to go? This afternoon, the majority leader joins me as we explore this subject plus other issues in Parliament. Honorable, you're welcome. Thank you, Martin. Right, so, I mean, <laughs> yes, of course, always good to see you. Uh, to take on your, your, your colleagues in the manner that you did, accusing them of sabotaging the economic development of the country because they've taken a legitimate position against these proposed tax waivers. First of all, why is it even necessary to grant companies waivers, companies that are, that, that are in this country, to work, make profit, most time, you know, uh, take the profit out of the country? And yet we provide some kind of a foundation to allow, to allow them to thrive. For those who are watching probably may not appreciate what these tax waivers are meant to do. How do we explain this to a six-year-old that we need to give incentive to a company that, is, that has come here to work, make profit, and then take the money to their host countries. Thank you, Alton, for the opportunity to further deal with this uh, all-important matter. So to any toddler who would ask this question, why grant tax waiver? First of all, taxation comes at a cost to any entity that is involved in investment. So if the company is looking for a place to invest, that company has many options. Various comp countries are in competition to, for foreign direct investment and other opportunities. Right. Ghana is not the only country in the world. There are several countries that have different laws to attract investment. Right. So normally, these are used as bait. Such policy on tax waivers are bait mm -hmm. to attract investment so that the company knows that, okay, if I go to country A, mm -hmm. I would have all my capital to invest in my production. Through that, there is, the company is able to cut down on costs. Because if you are investing at a low cost, mm -hmm. you are able, able to also sell at a very low cost. Right. You are able to expand because the opportunity is there for you to expand using the same capital. You are able to employ more. Through expansion, you are able to employ more. Mm -hmm. So if somebody is bringing $1 million to Ghana, mm -hmm. and in bringing $1 million, he would end up paying $500,000 in tax right. alone. Mm -hmm. That person would choose another country where he would have to spend $100,000 in taxation. Mm -hmm. That uh, 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 $900,000 would be available to that company to expand to aid production mm. and to employ more. Now, if your, 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 your tax policy is also very punitive or very unattractive, locally, people will prefer to invest in other countries. financial instrument. No, I'm looking even at right. locally. Okay. When people make money as Ghanaians mm -hmm. and they are looking at the opportunities, they will prefer that, okay, if I would have to pay so my tax, if importing raw materials or machinery for my business will cost me so much, mm -hmm. why not invest the money in treasury bills? Right. This is something that this government wants to discourage. Mm -hmm. It is the reason why during the campaign, Mr. President said upon assumption of office, he is going to introduce what we call one district, one factory. The essence of it is to create a new space, an enabling environment for businesses to thrive. Okay to encourage indigenous businesses and also to attract foreign investment. Mm -hmm. Now, in doing this, this government was mindful of the fact that 
there are other countries that were also selling their country and pushing for investment. Mm -hmm. So one way was to say that, look, if you come to Ghana, the equipment, the machinery, the raw materials that you'll be bringing to set up Your company. or to use for expansion, you are going to have a tax waiver. We are going to waive taxes on it. Now, Ed, uh, but, then, but then you have to qualify another one, one district, one factory. One district, one factory. I'm coming to that. Okay. Alton, the NDC is creating an impression as though government just got up and brought a list for parliament to approve. No. Mm -hmm. In fact, you, for a company to benefit, there's a desk at the trade ministry where you would have to meet some pre-qualification mm -hmm. criteria. They, they, they do a very rigorous interrogation of your, your, your whole investment plan mm -hmm. before they escalate it to the Ministry of Finance. Right. So it's not just that people get in and their money is being dashed out to people. No. There are conditions. There are conditions. That must be met. You must meet them. First from the Trade Ministry, trade ministry to the Finance. Before it gets to Finance. Mm -hmm. Before it comes to Parliament. We have a whole desk. So you go through all that. Then eventually it gets to Parliament. Now, my worry is, our friends are playing politics with it. Mm -hmm. Look here, under our 1D1F initiative, it is not a tax waiver granted the entity forever. If you look at the policy, government says that you benefit for five years mm -hmm. into operation. After five years, you would have to apply again. All right, so you don't benefit forever. Mm. You are not being given tax waiver on your profit. Right. This whole thing is about your imp the, 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 the raw material, the, raw material, I mean, I mean, the equipment, the machinery mm -hmm. that you bring in. No. Out to yesterday. And then, and then after five years, you go for a review or what? You have to apply because the, the dispensation is for five years mm -hmm. of operation. Mm -hmm. Now, yesterday, I wanted Ghanaians to know the hypocritical posture of the NDC on two fronts, on two fronts. Mm. One, the fact that with all the 42 companies whose applications are pending before parliament, the total amount. The value of the 42 the value, company, the request. Exactly. $400 million. It's now down to 350 million. After what, after some review? Yes, there were some reviews. Mm -hmm. There were some reviews. Whereas if you look at the a single entity, MPS, you recall. MPS, somewhere at, at 20, the Tema port. Meridian Port Service. Right. Somewhere 2014, this company approached Ghana and government of Ghana under uh, President Mahama, you know, approved their proposal to undertake the port expansion. Mm. Now, let me read out specifics to you to let you, to expose the NDC hypocrisy. This company invested $1.5 billion dollars in that port expansion mm -hmm. project. Now, they brought a $950 million plus, 908, let me quote the exact amount. The application that was brought by uh, Honorable Atu Fossen and Honorable uh, Monacote, mm. these deputy ministers, they were deputy doing, finance minister, the deputy yeah. finance minister, Dr. Fossen, the minority leader right. of today. Mm -hmm. He was a deputy finance minister. He and Madame Monacote. Monacote, they brought the application to Parliament. Mm -hmm. They brought an application of 982 million CD tax waiver. Mm -hmm. Okay? Eventually, Parliament approved 832 million. I am not criticizing the decision to grant tax waiver. I am rather Because they qualified at the time. Of course, I am exposing their double standard, their double talk and their hypocrisy. Now, let me read something more to you. Specifically, what this means mm -hmm. is that for every $1 that MPS invested, mm -hmm. we granted them almost 55 cents in tax waiver. More than half right. of $1. Right. Now, apart from that, listen to this. The company was also granted an exemption. It was exempt from corporate tax for 10 years and a reduced corporate tax of 15% over another 10 years for an additional five years. And again, finally, they were excluded from paying taxes on dividend to shareholders for 20 years. 
Listen. For 20 years. 20 years. Meaning it's, it is still, it's, this contract is still in session. They started somewhere 2016. Exactly. Now, after you've given them waiver on importation of the equipment, raw materials, whatever, you again saying that the profit that they make, the dividends, they are first of all, they are not even paying tax on profits. Right. You again said that they are, div, the, the shareholders would also not pay tax mm -hmm. on dividends. I'm saying that the rationale behind it was to encourage investors. Investors. And we agreed, of course. MPP is a, uh, 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 an investment mm -hmm. uh, uh, business driven uh, entity. We mm -hmm. believe in businesses. We believe that you don't do imposition of tax to encourage uh, enterprises to grow. Mm -hmm. You need to give them the space. So even in opposition, we were okay with it. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Right. Now, Apart from that, yesterday I talked about some illegality. Apart from this, 2015 and 2016, President Mahama himself, through executive approval, granted certain companies tax waivers. It didn't come to parliament. It didn't come now. Come to parliament. Now, let me explain. Granting executive approval is not illegal. But same being implemented without parliamentary approval is illegal unconstitutional and immoral. And in this case, what happened? Now, let me read the constitution to you. Article 1742, it provides, quote, where an act enacted in accordance with clause one of this article confers power on any person or authority to waive or vary a tax imposed by that act, the exercise of the power of waiver or variation in favor of any person or authority, mm -hmm. shall be subject to the prior approval of parliament by resolution. Now, these are the companies right. that benefited under what the then government referred to as strategic investment. And, and this, under, under the president, under the NDC, executive approval, executive approval, they said that strategic investors will benefit from it. Mm -hmm. The criteria for determining strategic investment uh, was a policy. Mm -hmm that they enacted. And I have no problem with it. Mm -hmm. Now, in 20, 29th April 2015, the Secretary to President, Kwesi Korte, wrote this letter to G, uh, GIPC Chief Executive. And in the letter, these were the companies that were granted tax waivers. Gassel, Dream Reality Limited, Garden City Mall Limited, Boston Investment Limited, ShopRite Ghana Limited, uh, Cement de la Afrique Ghana Limited, Vincent Sugar Refinery Ghana Limited, mm -hmm. Jata Cement Ghana Limited, Jata Cement. Belonging to the brother of. No, no, I'm not going into I don't want to personalize. I'm an entrepreneur. I want to be fair to the issue. We are dealing with entities that have benefited. Ecobank Ghana Limited, Dream Reality Ghana Limited. Now, for me, Edwin, uh, Edson, for me. That, that does this communication provide justification for well, the tax waiver? Because these yeah, are very, they, they very, were, very renowned and, right. and you know, so, very no, wealthy companies, if you like. You know what? I want to manage my submission okay. by not even criticizing it. I'm not, I'm not there yet. I'm not going into whether they were justified or not. For me, I want to believe that government acted in good faith. Mm -hmm. To the extent that the letter read, quote, uh, stated, thus... This is to inform you that on the recommendations of the Ministry of Finance, I hold that to be true and to have been done in good faith. His Excellency the President, President Mahama, mm -hmm. has approved the recognition of the undermentioned 10 companies as strategic investors. All right? So for me, if in the 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 view of the uh, 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 of the, the of, president of the government at the time. They were strategic These, enough to be given this. They were making strategic investment. So they needed to be given that tax waiver. So be it. Come to, to January 2016. This was another correspondence by Kwesi Korte, Secretary to President. He granted the following companies tax waivers. Wilma Africa Limited, West Hills Mall, Tang Palace Hotel Limited, mm. Mabani Seven Company and others. Sunon Asogli Power Limited. Quantum Power Ghana Gas Limited. Again, these companies benefited. I'm saying that. These did not even come to parliament. Mm -hmm. 
but GIPC was directed to grant them tax waivers. Now, I say they are unconstitutional because if you read the constitution, although GIPC has the power to grant that waiver, that is why I say power enacted uh, enactment that authorizes uh, an entity with regards to imposition of tax waiver, uh, variation and all that mm. must be subjected, must be subjected to prior parliamentary approval. And this was not done? This was not done. Mm. But I'm saying that we have not even gone there. I know what it raises. I want, right, no, no, I'm not. I'm saying that. Let's, let, for the sake of argument, say that they invoked the necessity rule mm -hmm. to say that, look, they want to promote enterprise. They want to promote entrepreneurship. They want to help Ghanaian entities. Mm -hmm. And of course, these are companies we know. For instance, the Jata Cement you were referring right. to, belonging to Mr. Mohammed's brother, we all know the company is functioning. It has employed Ghanaians. I will be the last to criticize the grant of exemption to Jata Cement. Mm. I repeat, I will be the last. It will be unpatriotic on my part to criticize the grant of exemption to Jata Cement because at least my two eyes can see what is that, that the doing? company is has brought mm -hmm. in equipment, it's manufacturing cement, it has employed Ghanaians, etc., etc. Question is, if you as an NDC party mm -hmm. as a government you believed in promoting enterprise you believe that when you grant tax waiver it will aid economic growth and fifth equity the secretary uh, the, the general secretary, general secretary of, the NDC. of ndc then transport minister on the floor of the house argue that look in granting tax waiver we should not look at the revenue losses so-called mm -hmm. but we should look at the potential for economic growth my question is why is it that today, you as a party in opposition, mm -hmm. will stampede government on in, in this a fine policy? Allow me to come in. So I, and uh, my worry is uh, that uh, the minority leader mm -hmm. who led government in parliament mm -hmm. to ask to for these waivers. Mm -hmm. No, no, these ones did not this come This one to executive approval. Come they, to parliament, mm -hmm. quite a number of them. I'm just citing these few. Mm. You are high loud in your voice for straightening government now look at nps alone meridian uh, uh, port, services. port services nps alone one company 832 million dollars apart from that i've given you that even shareholders are giving ta uh, uh, tax waiver on their profit on their dividend for 20 years. Mm. I don't think that any of these 42 companies all right, all right, so has what, that privilege. All right, so, so, so I'm so, saying that why, mm -hmm. why for straight why, government? Is it I'll, because I'll, you are in opposition? Okay, so allow me to come in. So these 42 companies, I mean, running up a little over 800, a little about 350 million, 350 million you can't dollars. compare okay, I get it. that to a single entity. Okay, so for those who want to simplify it, especially from the minority side of parliament, and they made the point that, I mean, you are, you are before the IMF asking for some relief to put your economy in order. The, the tranche we are even expecting is around $360 million. So they simplify it to say that you are expecting the IMF to give you $360 million to help manage your economy. Yet you are giving away another, the same amount of money for free. That's how they simplify it. If this tax waiver is not granted these companies, how disadvantaged will Ghana be in terms of attracting direct foreign investment? Because I understand that some have been pending for five to six years. Some because of because some have put on hold their expansion drive, employment, and all those issues. If this grant is not undertaken, how injurious will this be to the economy of this country? One, those who find the situation unacceptable, we move to another country. Is it already happening? Pardon? Yes, it's already happening. And would have to would have to move because one of the things that attracted them here was because they were going to get that waiver. Mm -hmm. Two, their production cost is going to increase and they are going to also put it on their pricing because if you are paying for everything and your cost is high, the consumer would, would, would have to pay. Three, it will mean that those who are going to stay, they are going to spend more chasing dollars mm -hmm. to import raw materials and equipment. So that would affect your local city. Right. All right? Mm -hmm. Four, 
they will be slow. There will be a slow pace in expansion. Because it's already, you are running a business and your cost of production is high. You are always looking at cost. You don't think about production. Mm -hmm. You don't think about expansion. So you are going to limit yourself. And then rather plow back the little profit and invest in another country. Finally, employment will not increase at the pace that is expected. Mm -hmm. Because if you are not increasing production, you start with 50 workforce. You are not likely within a period to increase the number of employment. Meanwhile, you have a chunk of the youth graduating from schools. Mm -hmm. So I am saying that they are oversimplifying it, as you said, and it is merely for the politics of it. Why do you justify the need for tax waiver to aid the economic growth whilst in government? But when you get into opposition, you condemn it. But, but again, I mean, there's a law that you've passed that is regulating this. And these applications, they've gone through the process. They've, they've gone from the Ministry of Trade to Finance and then to Parliament, referred to the Finance Committee. The Finance Committee sat on, on a number of times. There is still disagreement to the extent that when, when, when you met uh, for that emergency system, at the tail end of it, the committee had issues. And according well, to. I, I think, and uh, I, I got up and said, a committee of parliament cannot stampede parliament. Yes. Yes, the constitution allows parliament to work through committees. Mm -hmm. But when it is obvious that a committee of parliament is frustrating the work of parliament, plenary can take it up and then work towards that. Mr. Speaker ruled, giving the committee another opportunity that will resume. Mm -hmm. When we resume, he expects the committee will be done with its work, table its report, I mean, uh, 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 table the report mm -hmm. for us to consider. We cannot continue to frustrate the private sector. The NDC minority sees itself as a government in waiting, sees itself as a so-called responsible opposition. I want them to be responsible enough. The approach they have taken will not aid economic growth. Mm. The approach they have taken is unpatriotic. If it was good yesterday to aid investment, somebody asked me that, ah, why even Ecobank? Why Tank Palace? Why Gassem? Because, for instance, why Gassem? Yeah. I, didn't, I, I don't want to criticize the concept of strategic investor, but Alton, if somebody is going to build a hotel in Winneba, a five-star hotel in Winneba, and you term it strategic investment, mm -hmm. any reasonable man on the street would agree. Mm -hmm. But in the heart of Accra, where we have many five-star hotels, and a company is building a hotel at a Roman Ridge, right opposite Roman Ridge is a, 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 that M Plaza, right. that big hotel. Right. I'm saying that if you term it a strategic investment and you've given tax waiver, so be it. Mm -hmm. However, don't turn around and criticize new companies that are coming up. Within the, in the central region, one major uh, uh, company that is coming up is the, the uh, Triton Oak uh, Tissue Factory. Yes. Between my constituency and uh, uh, Gomua uh, uh, East, in the central region. Mm -hmm. This company is going to produce the raw material base for all the tissue companies. Mm -hmm. So if we are able to successfully see through this company, mm -hmm. which got attracted to Ghana by our 1D1 era, right. what that means is that all the tissue companies are not going to import their jumbo. It will be produced here. In Ghana. So the pressure on our CD we'll would come down. down. We are going to employ more people. That enclave, the Winneba, Pomaze, Suedro, Asebu, Ekunfi, that entire enclave mm -hmm. will become active. The value chain would allow people to get a space to trade and get employed. But again, I but, mean, but, I but, mean, but okay. a thing like this, mm -hmm. frustrating an investor, would the investor stay or go away? Look at uh, Centro. They are also refining oil. That oil refinery. If you have a company investing so much in oil refinery, we've been talking about it. But again, if, 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 my oil refinery has been there. Because you brought in Centio. Yes, because you brought in Centio. I mean, final pro, uh, finished mm -hmm. product. And we've gotten a company refining oil here. And you hear the minority criticizing, attacking that. Why grant them 
uh, but uh, honorable, if, if I may come in, if I may come in, in because we brought in sent you and the concern that has come from the minority side, the claim is that when they met, when, when they met to scrutinize the documents, the waiver applications before them, sent you, for example, after going through the, 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 the documentation that the, the minister presented, I mean, it came to that they had to whistle down the, the, the request agree, to over hundred million dollars, and same applied to a lot of so, them. It means maybe uh, not not, uh, not a lot of work was done uh, before uh, the uh, referral was was put before uh, the finance committee. Elton, I'm a parliamentarian. Mm -hmm. My job is to scrutinize. All I'm saying is that minority scrutinize, but don't obstruct. Why? I am. All my submissions are grounded on good faith. Mm -hmm. Look. I have said, and I didn't run away from it. I'm not here doing politics. I'm here to address a national issue in an open-minded state that people will respect the views I'm expressing. In our time, I'm, I've just said mm -hmm. that when they brought MPS, it was 982 million. Mm -hmm. We scaled it down. The minority, led by the late Akutose and my good brother, Isebe mm -hmm. their scrutiny on the finance committee brought it down to 832 million. And I'm saying that I commend them for the scrutiny which led to a reduction in the central term. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. But don't stampede and say zero and no, no. Look at it, scrutinize. And if there's a need to call for additional document, mm -hmm. you call for it. But you cannot say you are keeping a document for one year, two years, three years. That is all you have members That's on the, the you have members on the committee. The, the, the other the allegation. Go into the listen. No, the point is they that they try to bring. They, they say our finance committee chair publicly. Kwaku Kwaku has made his position clear see, on this matter. We are talking the, about the, the member of parliament for Tamil West, uh, Carlos Ahenkra. He's taking him on the floor. Katie, I'm on the no, same, saying that Kwaku Kwaku is also frustrating Elton, the work of the committee. Chairman to, of the committee Elton, appears to have a position Elton, against Elton, the task waivers. Elton, I have not heard certain things. I don't want to trivialize issues. It is government's policy to have this. Mm -hmm. Government's intention is to aid economic growth through such an incentive. I am saying that the grandstanding by the minority is unacceptable. Let's deal with it. Mr. Speaker has directed that the committee should meet. I am appealing to them that they should support government to get this done. Mm -hmm. In their time, they even granted tax waivers. We did not come to Parliament mm -hmm. because they felt that these companies must benefit from the 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 the, the that uh, uh, arrangement incentive mm -hmm. for good reasons, and we have cited some of the companies today. We can see Tan Palace working. All right, mm -hmm. if they are not gotten this, perhaps if they are charging hundred dollars a night per room, they will be charging one fifty. Mm -hmm. Today we have Jata Cement functioning. I don't want to trivialize it by saying. Former President Mohammed's brother and blah blah. Those are trivial things. Mm -hmm. No, they are unnecessary. We are seeing that the company is in existence, it's as employed. Other companies, ShopRite is right here. Right. We can see ShopRite. Mm -hmm. Perhaps if they were not granted this waiver, things would have been expensive, correct? Mm. The cost of rental would have been higher. I support it because I'm an entrepreneur. I know. I'm a private sector mm -hmm. person. So I support anything that would help. But I also know that a lot of my friends I speak to in the private sector are telling me that, Martin, if you guys are not helping us, we'll invest in treasury bills. We'll invest in some instruments where we know that, okay, at the end of every quarter, at the end of every month, we'll get our money back. Because we relied on your private sector drive mm -hmm. to support your initiative, to bring our investment. We shouldn't get people stuck. So is the committee still refusing to meet, even as, even as the speaker directed that no, during this I, break, they should have this I, meeting, I, they should I work am, on this, I and then am, when you come back, making, perhaps am, you can, you no, can debate it, I am it and making consider an it. appeal to my colleagues in the minority. It is the NDC's attack on government that I'm dealing with. As to issue of committee meeting, every committee has its leadership. I trust that they would carry through what is expected of them. But I'm saying that the NDC shouldn't take a posture that yen pene, yen pene, yen tie, yen tie, yen be frustrating. That is unacceptable. I am saying that even a single entity and in their time had in excess of 832 million. We are talking about 42 companies benefiting from a tax incentive of less than 400 million. Mm -hmm. So you have no basis 
to attack unless merely because of politics you want to frustrate privacy. But, but, but what, about, what about your side? The committee made up of at least I, I don't, as I, I go, don't think 25 that, members of the, the don't committee. Think, I don't think that we have an issue. You don't have an issue. I so don't the think sabotage is clearly coming from the NDC side. I don't think that we have an issue. In the absence of them, can the committee so sit? Well, if we have to get to that bridge, can, can the report be put together, I'm, even if it is not... I am a, saying that, so, you see, first make the appeal. I'm reaching out to them. From yesterday, it's been an appeal, appeal, appeal. Mm -hmm. Because it's getting out of hand. All right? So... Because I you're am, under pressure from the business community? The state of the economy... We don't have to create certain impressions. We need, to, we need to get the private sector... Running. Elton, has any graduate given you a CV to find him or anything? Oh, thousands, thousands of them. Right. And all of them, what's their target? <laughs> in fact, when you finish school, you want to be employed. By government. Exactly. Almost in my house, in my office, on my phone. You get people sending you a CV. Ghana Gas, GMPC, Cocoa Board, GRA. These are all state institutions. Are we promoting state institutions to employ idle hands or we want to promote private sector growth, which would create space for more employment. Mm -hmm. And that is what we'll get if we give them that incentive, allow the cost of production to be low. Oh, no, I understand high that. cost of production affects productivity. I understand. High cost of production mm -hmm. affects employment. High cost of production will lead to high cost of the product itself being produced. I understand that when that they, makes our economy unattractive. I do understand that when the leadership met the president, this was one of the president's proposals for you to work together to bring finality to these waivers. No, I am not going into specifics. We've had a meeting with His Excellency the President as leadership. We discuss general issues. I don't think that it's appropriate to narrow down on a particular matter. Mm. We discuss how we could work together with the executive to ensure that, you know, uh, executive functions well and parliament also doesn't stampede the executive. After all, it is one Ghana. So I don't want to go into fine details of what has been discussed. Mm. It, it will be inappropriate. But again, uh, how do you respond to other voices on the streets that says that we are heading towards an election, we are just some six months away from the election, government is seeking to grant these waivers to these companies. I mean, the, the application the, the, did not come today. It didn't come no, today. No, the application did not but come. But the benefits will happen today if no, the no, approval but, goes through. So when and the then they say that we are in an election year, what is the guarantee that there is not kind of a gentleman agreement behind the scenes where people oh, benefit and duly? Oh, come on. These are, these are no, also voices no, on the no, streets no, no, no. that demands uh, Elton, you know, some great, clarity. With the greatest respect to said voices, how, how do I gain, personally, from a company that is bringing equipment, raw materials, to undertake its production. Isn't it the ordinary Ghanaian who is going to gain through employment? Are we happy with the state of these companies where they are stuck? They don't know where to turn to. Some of them have been compelled to pay mm. at the ports, okay? Mm. Some of them have been compelled to pay and then they will pass on the cost to consumers. Is that what we want? and turn around and do politics. See, Alton, there's a limit to everything one does. Mm -hmm. You are a politician. Do the politics, but there's a limit to it. Don't do that extremist politics of convenience where you think that because it is not your government, you must shut everything down. That's not patriotism. All right. Alexander Fayemarkin is my guest here on the polls, here on Joy News. We are discussing matters in parliament, the controversial tax waiver, application that has been pending before the house for years for some of the companies five for some of them six years for some four for some three and the minority they've taken a, a tough position on this matter they have always rejected the the consideration of this on the floor at the last you know uh, uh, sitting the speaker directed that more work should be done on it so what is going to happen when the house resumes on the term so are you still trying to reach out to your colleagues to soften their stand they appear to have the backing of the flag bearer of the NDC who says that it is not the way to go. I do understand that before we went to, the IMF had concerns with tax waivers, and then we had to go to parliament to have a new law to regulate it. So it, the, the assumption is that whatever is before the house, satisfy whatever of the course. entire plenary approved. And so there shouldn't be a concern. That is why, that is the hypocrisy 
that is the hypocrisy I keep talking about. Mm -hmm. Why would the flag bearer of the NDC, His Excellency, former president, uh, John Dramani Mahama, kick against tax waiver when he himself introduced a policy called strategic investor? When he himself, with the greatest respect, found, uh, found it necessary to grant tax waivers and same did not even come to parliament? Why would he say so? It would be for politics. In any event, this is the first time in the history of our democracy that a tax incentive is being regulated. The first time that parliament has passed a law, a regulation, a policy, a guideline where every box would have to be ticked. Mm -hmm. In the past, there was no such thing. So that in itself should tell you that parliament has created a room for accountability. Elton, there was nothing like freebies under here in this. It's not the case that when you are granted the exemption, it is forever. Mm -hmm. You close your books and you go. Parliament has part of its oversight. At any point can invite the ministry to give account how this was implemented. And that is our bona fide. Mm -hmm. Why would, not want, would, they, would we not want to utilize that? Take advantage of that. Look at it, scrutinize, approve it quarterly or every six months or semi-annually. Mm -hmm. Come back, tell the minister, we approved it on the following conditions. Semi-annually or quarterly, we want report on how the... If they are going according the, to what the, parliament the, did. The, yeah. the approval is being mm -hmm. implemented. What equipment are br being brought in? How many raw materials are being br brought in? What, what are the values and all that? Mm -hmm. uh, Elton, you remember not long ago, our pharmaceutical companies were competing with a lot of uh, imported drugs. Mm -hmm. When we gave them the space... Are they not expanding? During uh, Minister Alan Chamantin's time, this, uh, some 32 drugs, yeah. okay, were, were limited. Government placed limitation on them in terms of the importation, that these 32 drugs cannot be imported because we want to aid local production. Okay? Today, one of the companies that is suffering is the B5, which is... Supposed In to Tema, produce uh, uh, sanitary parts. Exactly. Now we import sanitary parts. It costs us so much. Now this company has the capaci capacity to produce sanitary parts. If we give them the space, if we give them that incentive, mm -hmm. the raw materials that will come will be cheaper. They will produce locally and will buy it cheaper. As compared to letting them pay tax on it, on the raw materials, and then they, you know, uh, passing on the cost to a woman. Is that right? I, 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 so are you, are should, you confident we should, that... We should I, explain, we should... Uh, the NDC would have to understand it in these real terms mm -hmm. than to look at the convenience of the politics they are... They are, they are but and, and is, it, is it ever going to change because you've been... You've been, you've, been, you've been convincing, you've been appealing well, to them, you've been all manner of things. Well, today <laughs> we've, 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 we've laid a fact bare. Right. We have demonstrated that all they're doing is being done in bad faith. Mm -hmm. They are doing all of this in bad faith. They granted an, a single entity, mm -hmm. 832. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come anywhere near what we are doing. The 42 companies, the benefits do not come anywhere near this amount. Mm. We've also shown that they granted a number of entities the, 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 the incentive without even parliamentary approval. Mm -hmm. Of course, we say it's illegal, it's unconstitutional, but they still did it. Can the same be done today? What I'm saying is that why would they turn around and say that even the conditions under which we are granted are much more stricter? If you look at it, they are regulated. We've passed the law to regulate, mm -hmm. all right? Apart from that, we are not saying that these investors should not pay the, uh, tax on their dividend for 20 years. They did. So if you look at it, if you compare, their uh, regime. tax waiver regime was even more relaxed than ours. I repeat, they were giving Corporate income tax was exempt for 10 years. We are not giving 10-year exemption. 
Okay. W w the, they were saying 15% mm -hmm. tax reduction for another 10 years and then no payment of tax on dividends. Are we saying that? All right. So, so it's, 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 it's mere politics, right, which so, is unacceptable. So Alexander for American is the majority there. We'll take a show. When we come back, the question is, can, can as a developing country like Ghana, can we do without the granting of tax waivers to people we are courting them to come and invest in our country? And how much of scrutiny must we employ so that this does not end in the wrong pockets? When we come back, we'll deal with this matter, plus other issues that are likely to come up in Parliament when they resume on the 10th of June. Stay right there.